Hey, 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 everyone. Hope everyone is good. Hope everyone is great. I hope this morning um, you got up and you said your prayers. I know that sounds so elementary, like say your prayers in the morning, but y'all, it's it's so... I can't even tell you what it does for me personally, and I know for so many people that that covering of prayer just prepares us for the world because on a day-to-day basis, we really don't know how this day will turn out, what we will be faced with, and even, you know, some battles that we have to fight that we were not privy of, you know, before we open our eyes and our feet hit the floor. I hope that the prayers that you you prayed is one of thankfulness, first of all, for just even being here another day, thankful for everything that God has given and provided you, thankful for your family and your friends, thankful for the things that, you know, you didn't even ask God for and he supplied. And then, you know, of course, we go into God protect this, protect that, Lord, you know I'm going through this or I'm experiencing this. And then you have your whole spill and your connection with God. Um, I hope that whatever it is that you prayed for will give you some form of resolution in God's time. Of course, not yours. When it's ours, we want everything microwave. When it's God's time, it's it's right where it's supposed to be. I hope that he uh, gives you clarity as well in a situation that has been plaguing you third or maybe second I don't know where I'm at but anyway (laughs) additionally that's what I'll say additionally I hope that um I hope that you gain clarity after the prayer on anything that you've been dealing with you know many times when we're praying out loud or maybe just in our minds, in that connection with God. After the prayer, we kind of settle and think about some things. And um, we ourselves may find clarity right after the prayer. Uh, Just to say it out loud, just to think it in our mind, ruminate on it and speak to God. Sometimes the the answer is instant. Other times um, it takes some digging throughout the day to, to, you know, think about I hope that you you gain that clarity for your life as well. And last, I hope that someone showed you today that they're good. I think what I've been noticing lately in this world, I hate now to even turn on the news. Everything is so negative. Uh, I used to be glued to the news just to be abreast on the events that were unfolding. And I realized that it really put me in a bad space because there was no positivity, hardly any in the news. And so I hope that someone today shows you that they're a good person. You know, even if you something as little as, you know, going through the drive through and somebody pays for your lunch or your drink, um, someone says, hey, that shirt or that dress or that outfit looks nice on you. Uh, someone just tells you you have a nice smile. Someone holds the door for you. Just random acts of kindness so that you too know that there are good people out there. Today I got up. I started this on Monday, um, but I did a, a walk on Monday. And then this morning, as well. I walked, but I worked out first. I worked out for 45 minutes and then I walked me a good old 5.8 miles, baby. And let me tell you something. These legs are like, ooh. One thing about it is I am not a spring chicken anymore. Um, And I realized too that I spend a lot of idle time um, not partaking in physical activity but the beautiful thing about thinking about that when I thought about it I used to work out years ago and I remember when I first began how much I hated it I made it as a goal an individual goal so I wrote it down I was like I'm gonna do it you know I wrote it down on my journal and I'm gonna work out and I remember I think it was like the first two weeks I was dreading it and after the two weeks I felt a change in myself. It was like it became routine for me. Not only did I feel good 
uh, internally, but I did, you know, externally as well. I saw little small changes. And then I realized how much of a stress relief it really was working out. I was able to think clear while I was working out while, you know, simultaneously, you know, getting my body together. And it also just challenges the mind because you are challenging yourself to keep going. And I love that part about working out. So, you know, life happens as it always does. Things get in the way, time constraints, schedules being a little off. And um, so I said this time I'm going to I'm going to work out. I'm going to get back to it again this morning. Even Monday, I was like, "Uh uh-uh, but I made myself push through. Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because, you know, one thing I realized as well is that when we go through a transformative period, it always starts off mentally. Mentally, we are changing aspects of our mind. Our mind begins to transform and then we pull and lean into other things that feel good for us. So, for instance, you know, if you came out of a bad breakup You many times sit in the space of sadness. Um, You lose self-worth depending on how harsh the breakup was and the situation um, that accompanied it. Uh, For many people, they they do. They lose a part of themselves and um, there is a break where they don't know who they are. And when you start to regain yourself and find your purpose, your mind transforms. Because now you realize, okay, I'm single. Now I want to get to know me. I want to find things that I'm happy about. I want to experience a new life. The mind changes. And then on top of that, you know, especially with us as women after a breakup, baby, we do a lot of things. We either going to go cut that hair. <laughs> We're going to get into our Bible Yeah, you know it. We are going to get rid of some things from our past mm -hmm, so that we can, you know, do something different and be renewed. And we're going to start working out. And it's, you know, beautiful how the mind transforms everything else into just soliciting you to do something different. I want to ask you something. What was the moment that changed you? What was the moment that made you feel like, I'm tired, I'm ready for something in my life to change? Was it an event? Was it something traumatic? Or were you just sitting by yourself and realizing, you know, I want to do something different? I shared in in previous episodes that change that happened Uh, some years ago that really transformed my mind and transformed my way of thinking. Uh, I started to look at things very differently. I was in a headspace of knowing that everything around me was changing and everything around me was different, but I was still trying to hold back because, listen, The humanistic part of us wants to still gauge into connections with friends and we don't want to lose them and we don't even want to change parts of ourselves because we don't know what that will be on the outside. But then something had to give because I was tired of being in my own body and I was tired of thinking the way that I was thinking right before And I was tired of going in circles and I was tired of doing the same monotonous thing over and over. There was no excitement in my life. And to be honest, you know, many people may be religious or not, and it's okay. This is a podcast for all. But God was calling me and he was pulling me closer to him and I knew it. For years I had, uh, I just, you know, I was like, Lord, listen, okay, I got some things to work on. And, you know, we do this bargaining effect with God. We tell him what we don't want. And we even ask him to give us a little bit more time. 
the cautionary thing in that is that we don't know how much time we actually have. <laughs> so I remember many moments of him pulling me to do things that I'm doing now and I wasn't ready for it. Uh, being asked to do speaking events. And I'm like, yo, I don't have, okay, the nerves to stand in front of anybody and speak. So I would, you know, decline the offer. Um, There were times when randomly I would be somewhere and someone would minister to me. And I knew that their, their calling was real because, you know, if you've ever experienced it, The tears begin to flow and everything that they tell you is real. You don't know these people. They just minister to your heart. And I know that God is using them as a vessel. And more and more it began to happen in my life where people were just ministering to me, you know, from here, there and everywhere. And I felt the Holy Spirit. I really did. I felt it on me. And for me, that was the, I'll say that was a monumentous monumentous monumental ooh, <laughs> monumental moment of change where I knew that God had something on the other side for me I tell you what's so funny about us uh, I say this all the time as individuals we hold our own selves back we seem to think that we are not good enough for God's goodness we do we tell ourselves, I've experienced this, I've done this, um, I've, I know this, um, I'm not good enough. But I'll remind you that almost every character in the Bible, well, every character in the Bible, were heathens. You hear me? <laughs> every single character in the Bible had a backstory that was horrible, but God still used them for his good he showed them that though you may be broken though you may be fractured though you may feel that you are not enough I'm still going to use you because it is in the people who are broken and damaged and who others deem as not good God shows them that they can be used and that they are and I think outside of that as well You build self-confidence when you know that God is really using you to do something great. Many of you have experienced moments in your life where you always had to fight for you. You always had to... Wow. Let me take a moment. I don't know. It just hit me real quick. Let me go back. Many of you have experienced in your life where you had to fight for you, where you didn't have anyone to go to, where you were the bread and the butter, where you were the person who had to make things pop, make things happen, where you didn't have stability in parents, where you didn't have stability in friends, where you didn't have stability in a partner. So you were the ultimate And then when things started to fall in line for you, when you become blessed, when God sees your earnest work and your hard work and he begins to bless you, you don't know what to do. Many times the first thing that people do (laughs) because you've been so traumatized by having to put things together in order your way and by your hands, you feel like it's a joke. When good things come, you seem to think that it's not going to last. I want to tell you something that I learned a long time ago. I think that God builds everyone differently based on circumstance. And that we learn ourselves when we find out who we really are. And I've always looked up to people who have an independent mind and an independent work ethic, and they pull from the resources that they have within them to make something out of nothing. Those are the people, in my opinion, that God has really and truly blessed because there was no one to depend on and God made a way for you. 
when these blessings begin to fall, when they that bank account increases, when you are walking into spaces that you never thought you would walk into, when you were given that job and that position that everybody said you wasn't qualified for, oh goodness, listen, I feel a mm, coming on. <laughs> When all of these things start to happen for you, when that house comes, right, that you've been just thinking about, praying about, you know, knowing that maybe the income and that credit score ain't where it need to be. And then, boom, it happens and it envelops for you when you've been praying for that child after miscarriage, after miscarriage. And boom, God blesses you with that child when you've been praying for a significant other. Mm. After years and years of abuse are plagued with heartbreak and God gives you something good when you've been hurt by friends over and over and over again and then God gives you plenty who support and guide you when you've been diagnosed with something that is life threatening (laughs) And God turns it around and he gives you a healthy vessel. No one knows how you was able to beat it. Ooh, it's the blessings. God has his arms wrapped around each and every one of us. It is it is whether you believe or not. And again, I'm not here to, to judge anybody. I know how good God has been to me. I want you to know that you deserve all of that. You deserve every single thing that you've been praying for and that you've been wanting. I always feel like when you sow good seeds, oh goodness, you will get a beautiful, healthy, overflowed harvest because it is in the work that you do in the beginning with an earnest heart that God understands that you are doing it not to receive anything so much, you know, from a, a purpose or from, you know, solicitation. Well, if I put this out here, God is going, you know, do this. No, because many times like we're just doing what we do, what we naturally do. And when God knows your heart, he will bless you. You deserve every single thing that God is giving you. You deserve every single thing that you dreamed of. You deserve every single thing that you cried at night Four, I say this a lot as well when it comes to our prayers and the things that we want. Listen, it is true that patience is a virtue. And when people hear of the word patience, a lot of people really get upset because they feel like they've been patient for so long. But I want to ask you this question. I want to honestly ask you this question because, you know, Patience comes with a lot of things that God needs from us and it's obedient. So have you been all the way obedient with everything that God needs you to be obedient about so that what you've been praying for, hmm, what you've been praying for is going to come to fruition? Because see, I can pray every day, every night for an increase monetarily. Lord, I need $100,000. I want $100,000 in my my checking account, <laughs> in my savings. I can earnestly pray that every single night. But I want you to ask yourself, if that prayer is, is that similar to, I just need Are you ready for the increase? Are you saving your money? You eating out every night? Hmm? Hmm? Are you abreast on your bills? Are you missing out on work? You know, just taking off because of, you know, you just don't want to go to work today. It's so many other factors that go into it when we ask God what it is that we need. Are you doing the work? Ladies, gentlemen, when you are asking for that spouse, that significant other, that person to come into your life, did you do the work? Are you doing the individual work? Are you ready? You know, we can pray for the perfect person. Hmm? Men, you want a woman five, five, or whatever. I don't know. Like, might like them tall or whatever, you know, size. Hmm? She can cook. 
She can clean. She's sweet. You know, all the good stuff. But are you prepared for that woman? Are you mentally prepared? Because see, all of the good stuff that comes along in your mind, are you able to handle it? Because she can be nice and sweet, but she may be passive as well. Can you take a passive woman? (laughs) And the same thing with us as women. We pray for this man. We want all of these things. Oh, let him have a good job. Let him be healthy. You know, some of y'all women have requirements. No kids. If you got kids, maybe one. You know, no baby mama drama. And that's that's not too much to ask. It's not. But then I'm going to ask you. You know, can you handle that? Are you too prepared? Are you individually prepared for that type of man? Do you have drama in your life? Hmm? Have you reconciled with yourself? Have you done the work individually? Do you deserve to have a man at this point in your life? Do you deserve to have a woman at this point in your life? Y'all got to ask yourself these questions. This is self-assessment that I be talking about. (laughs) We have to assess our own selves. When we put things out in the atmosphere... When we say it out loud, when we ask God for the things that we want and the things that we need, we have to be prepared for the answer that comes. It may not come tomorrow. It may come a month from now or months from now. God may even grant you what it is that you ask earnestly in your heart and just sits back and wait to see what you're going to do with it. The question always becomes when we ask those questions, are we prepared for it? And when you get it, when you get it, my baby, you got to want to keep it. You have to want to curate it, protect it, love it, honor it. When God gives us things, sometimes we just act like we were supposed to have it. You know, there are many people walking around here that believe that God is supposed to supply every single thing that we have. He's not. He loves us so much that he gives. But when you have this this, uh, air of arrogance and feel as if everything is owed to you, that is when God will show you just who he is and pull some things back for you to appreciate who he really is. I also want you to know that, you know, nothing is too hard for God. And I know that um, that is always, you know, often put out in the atmosphere. But it is so true that God can handle any and everything that we are going through and we can handle it as well. I know sometimes, you know, life can be so just overbearing to the point where We are asking ourselves, when am I going to get a break? You know, when am I going to find some resolution in my life? Why is it seems that everybody else's life is mirroring nothing but happiness and joy and that they seem to be so blessed? But here's something that I want you to know. And I, I think I think, you know, this as well. You don't know the story, the backstory of what people are going through. You don't know what they experience and why it seems now that they are also blessed. You also don't know if that is really the story that they are putting out. I caution you to not compare your life to someone else's. Your life is your life to be lived and we have to intentionally walk our own walk for us. When it's time to lay it down, you know, when we take our last breath, God is not looking for us to answer the life of somebody else. He is looking for us to answer for the life of ourselves. I remember watching a YouTube video. Y'all, I go deep into these YouTube videos. And um, I'm always finding myself watching when people have near-death experiences. And I heard this man talk about how he was not a believer. He was an atheist. Um, He was also a scientist and many scientists, they take a scientific approach to life, which is common. And he ended up having a heart attack and he described seeing himself on the operating table. And it was as if he was floating um, above himself, like he could watch the doctors working on him and the whole nine. And then he like went into this tunnel of light. 
and he said he was moving rapidly but everything like once he came out the turn the tunnel he saw the colors and how bright and vivid everything was he said it was like four five six d you know like it was so vivid and then all of a sudden he fell down And he said, I knew that I was going to hell. He said, because I didn't rise, I fell. And when he fell, he saw the darkness and he heard people wailing. Ooh, y'all, come on with me for a minute. He saw, he heard people wailing, screaming for for their lives. And he said he knew he was in hell. He immediately knew he was in hell. And he heard this laugh, this bellowing laugh. When I was listening to this, even seeing his facial expression, um, you know, these type of stories, <laughs> I knew it was real. And he felt the heat. And he just kept hearing the wailing of people crying out for water. And he said, and in an instant, he was standing, and then it's like something pulled him back up. And he came to into his body. And he said, that is the moment in which I believed. Now, again, you know, on a scientific uh, way of thinking, scientists always say, you know, the brain goes through certain stages and, you know, it can be a hallucination and this, that and the other. But even when I dive deep into listening to other videos about people having near-death experiences they say the same thing and that experience that they feel um where they feel like they're going to hell I don't know how I got to that place with sharing that I think it was just maybe to allude to the fact that we still have some work to do whether you believe or you don't believe We have some work to do. And um, if you are a Christian, you understand that the work that we do is individually. That's where I was. (laughs) It's individually and has nothing to do with anyone else. So we have to live a life of intentionality. We have to live a life guided by something that has morals and uh, good standing and promises around it. And we have to live a life that is joyous and happy and cohesive to the life that God wants us to live and last you deserve it all it doesn't matter what you've been through it doesn't matter what you've done you can start now and change so much of yourself in the beginning I talked about the mental um transformation that we have you know I really feel like when our mind is mentally stable so is everything else. We want to work towards something that is better for us. So mentally, when we feel the change, the transformation, and we stick in that for a while and we're doing good and we're thinking good thoughts and we're navigating through our issues and we're leaning more to God, we pick up something else. And we want to do something else and we want to live better and we want to do better so for this episode i want you to take these three things with you number one the prayer that you pray i know that it's earnest and i know that it's honest and from your heart and i know that it's something deep down know that god's promise is what it is his promise and that he would never leave you by yourself he won't Just because it's not happening yesterday or the moment in which you need it to does not mean that it's not going to happen. But sidebar, you got to do the work as well. God is doing his part and you have to do yours. Number two, if you've always been the person to make things work, didn't have anyone to lean on, didn't have support, You are special. You really are, God. And when God blesses you and gives you what it is that you have been wanting and praying for, know that it's your time. It's your time and that no one can take it away from you. It's your time and know that it was for you. 
It's your time and know that it was destined for you. It's your time. Utilize it. It's your time and make sure that you keep it. Make sure that you stay in your good grace. Make sure that you honor God each and every day, that he satisfied every prayer with a blessing. And third, know that you are not too heavy for God. Anything that you are burdened with, it's not too heavy for God. Anything that you feel that is taking over your life, it is not too much for God. You can always confide in him. You can always find strength in him. You can always know that God will be here. You know, people will turn their backs on you, but God won't. Thank y'all so much for listening in. Thank y'all so much for being here. Thank you so much for every single person who has really poured into this podcast. For those who have done a monthly subscription, I am like thankful. I told you guys um, in one of the previous episodes, I am currently working on a book and um, it's a lot. It's a lot to get these things together. It's a lot mentally to to um, get the thoughts together. And it's, you know, it does have a cost to it. So the support does help. Um, thank you so much. If you want to do a one-time donation, you can go to my link, lisamarie.info. <laughs> lisamarie.info, you can make a one-time donation. You can give me a dollar, baby. I don't care. Thank you. You don't have to if you don't want to. Um, and also, I have a YouTube channel. So tap into the YouTube channel as well. And um, until next time, i see you guys later. All right, peace. Thank you.